For the past 16 months, KPBS media partner iNewsource has published a series of investigative reports into the operation, funding, and staffing of the North County Transit District. Joining me to talk about what's happening at the agency is NCTD's Executive Director, Matthew Tucker. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. No, last month, iNewsource reported 20 high-level managers and employees left NCTD since January of this year. For an agency with only 127 employees, how do you explain why so many people have left in the last six months? First, that's factually incorrect. Um, of the 23 employees that were identified, a significant number of them were not high-level employees whatsoever. Um, we've about just, how many? Just uh, I that, can't I can't uh, give you the okay. exact number off the top of my head, but um, about 37 percent of that 23 number were people that were laid off due to decisions that we made from a business point of view, and, and the vast majority of them were also laid off due to the fact that they were being funded through grant programs that were being discontinued. So that, that represented a, a true up for our budget um, in terms of positions that were no longer gonna be continued in the organization. Um, it also reflected some changes that we had made business decisions throughout the year. And as we were going into July 1 of our new budget, those, those layoffs had to take effect. The chief uh, operating officer, chief of safety, chief of transfer, transit enforcement were, were they 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 were they did not all leave at one time. They were th those positions are all filled today. What is the most important answer? The most important answer is if the focus is on the direct reporting, the leadership that reports to me, every single position is filled. And speaking about Richard Katz, who's the former chairman of Los Angeles MetroLink, uh, told iNewsource in a statement that as as a board member, he would be concerned if the same turnover happened. Uh, at his agency, he also raised questions about adequate experience in operations and safety for the senior level replacement hires that you were just talking about. So how would you respond to that? Well, um, first I would I would say that our board, the NCTD Board of Directors, oversees the day-to-day -day, um, operations of NCTD, provides policy direction and feedback. They get significant briefings on what we do. Our board is very comfortable with where we are. We have never in the history of NCTD had more experienced people in positions than we have today. I'm very happy with the with, with the skill sets of the people that we have in positions today. In fact, one of our um, one of the employees that holds one of those senior positions has been with NCTD probably 25 to 30 something years. So he has the adequate experience to do the work that we're asking him to do. Well, you know, I knew source also reported over the past year many former NCD employees have come forward anonymously, as you're aware, with information and concerns about the agency's management and safety culture. I'm going to read some things here. One former employee said, in part, a definite lack of trust for all employees and their ability to become a parent. Uh, general counsel was brought in. All documents had to be reviewed at the general counsel level. This became gridlock for most departments. Some of us were told our performance was declining. Everything was in a state of flex. And another former employee blamed you specifically. He said, uh, or he or she said, it has nothing to do with the uh, right public anymore or the long-term or short-term interest of the agency it's all about what makes him look good do you see any connection between your management style and uh, maybe this uh, turnover no um, the fact of the matter is we from the point that I was hired in the late December 2008 the board had set a number of priorities. One was sort of financial stability, and then the other key principles were related to reshaping our business model, which required a change in our organizational culture. So if you look at during the time period that I've been there, you will see that we have developed plans across all of our business areas that never existed before. We've updated policies, we've brought in in-house general counsel. What I wanted to do was to create an agency that was much more responsive, that the board through policies and procedures could have a better idea of what's going on. The fact of the matter is we do ask lots of questions. We do ask our employees hard questions. We do look at the work that they do, that we do scrutinize them. And if we don't think it, it's where it needs to be, we ask them to continue to work on it. I don't apologize for that. That's part of, a, of doing the job, being due diligent and asking tough questions and expecting people to do their best. And, and speaking of that, the employees who did talk with iNewsource, um, they said they did so anonymously because they had to sign a non-disclosure agreement and they feared legal reper repercussions. Um, North County Transit District is a public public agency funded by taxpayers um, that I believe is supposed to be transparent. So do you feel you have an obligation to, uh, as a public employee, to answer questions about your agencies, about your job actions? Let's correct one thing factually. They did not have to sign a severance agreement. 
those employees chose to execute a severance agreement. And we believe do it, providing severance agreements with employees that you're going to separate is the right thing to do for the employee and for those families to help them successfully transition. The fact of the matter that someone voluntarily uh, signs an agreement then fails to live up to that agreement should not grant them the ability to speak anonymously without anyone mentioning the fact that they signed an agreement and are violating the terms of that agreement. It just doesn't, it can't be fair in the sense that from a transit district perspective, we can't talk about what's in someone's personnel record and there's no way for KPBS to actually know the credibility of the person that they're getting the information from since KPBS has no idea what's in that personnel file. Are there types of proprietary information that you think needs to be protected and if so, what are they and, and why do you think, it's, it's a public agency is what I'm getting at, so what can you talk about as far as how the agency is operating? I can talk to you 100% about anything about what the agency is is operating, and I suspect to you, for you, most of the employees that you're speaking that KPBS speaks to and gives them the anonymous comment comments. Most of those comments are anonymous because those employees don't want to attach their names to it. They understand that KPBS is facilitating and supporting of an approach that doesn't afford NCTD due process. So everyone would really love to be able to take a cheap shot at someone without ever having anybody call them to question <laughs> their own performance and their whole behavior. That, that's, that's really something that is a little bit surprising from a credible organization to carry that. Well, let, let me clarify, they, they have been speaking to iNewsource and, and not KPBS, <laughs> so I we'll just want to make that clarification. And I think we're going to end here on this, that. Um, According to the iNews source reporting, as we've been speaking of, 13 former NCD employees have been paid more than $300,000 in severance pay in this past year. By comparison, the much larger uh, public agency, Sandag, uh, with nearly 300 employees, has just had two severance packages, or severance agreements, I should say, in that same time span. So what do you want to tell taxpayers about spending money on severance pay uh, related to the, maybe the high turnover at your agency? Well, first, um from what I'm told, I knew source abides by the same journalistic standards as KPBS. Um, so I want to make sure that that is clear and on the record. So if that's the standard for our news source, it's also the standard for KPBS. Um, True. Keep in mind, um, too, in terms of the 20-something odd employees that you're talking about, I mentioned to you that a significant number of those employees lost their jobs due to their grant programs being ended. And so at the end of the day, what is the compassionate human fair thing to do from people who are transitioning into a pretty tough economy. So if the argument is that we should not be providing services to people who are, are leaving employment, let's have that as, as a discussion point. I believe it's the right thing to do. Okay, and I do have to leave it there because I'm out of time. North County Transit District CEO Matt Tucker, thank you very much. Hey, thank you for having me.